Hello, allow me to introduce myself. I'm Mike Collins, retired now. I spent a life in hardware maintenance for practically everything that's ever stood on a computer floor, from IBM mainframes to supercomputers such as Cray and Fujitsu. Uh, every kind of peripheral device from printers to vacuum column tape drives and those huge old multi platter disk drives and throughout my career, I have always had a hobby of programming. I've never actually been paid to, to write programs, but programming has been my, my hobby always. I started off with BASIC and Fortran, and then I moved into Forth, which is an interesting language. I went to work for Burroughs Machines, and the resident language on their mainframes was Algol, so I learned that. And Algol gave rise to a lot of other languages that were spawned from it, such as Pascal, Ada, and more latterly CPL, which morphed into BCPL, which morphed into B, and then got rewritten into C, and I have written many thousands of lines in C. So I think I can say that I've had a lot of contact with the computer industry. I'm, sure, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm sitting in front of a window here and my glasses are shining, but just to prove that I have got a pair of eyes behind them, you see? <laughs> now, I don't claim to be an expert on the AVR range of Atmel devices. In fact, I don't even claim to be an, an expert on the AT Tiny 85, which this course is about. But the knowledge that I have gained on it has been incredibly hard won. So I'd like to pass it on to anybody else who's in the same position I was in a year ago of wanting to learn this chip and wanting to program it in assembler because I found the amount of material available for learning it was pretty sparse. So for anybody wanting to do that, I think this course will get you where you want to be. Assembler is not really a difficult language to learn. And with a bit of instruction, which I hope this course will give you, I think you'll find yourself up to speed and writing routines quite easily in a reasonably short time. So who is the course devised for? Well, it's kind of devised for me a year ago. This is the course that I wish I had had when I was starting off because it would have saved me a lot of time. It's designed for a person that knows something about hex and binary, who can look at 1101 and know that this is a D for dog. Who knows that if you shift a binary word one position to the left, you multiply its value by two, that kind of thing. The, the, the basic mechanics of binary. It's not designed for somebody who is already a guru in assembler, perhaps on an, another chip. And in fact, if you are that person, then you might find this course very tedious because I do tend to go into things in the detail that will be appreciated by a beginner. So you might find it quite tedious turning, churning through all of that stuff. Although, if you are looking to get into the Atmel chip, then the course may still be of benefit to you uh, if you can put up with going through the nitty gritty. I worked in the IBM field for quite some time and I got used to the IBM alphabetic nomenclature. So I tend to talk about Abel, Baker, Charlie, Dog, Easy, Fox. And then it goes on to golf, but we're not going to get into golf. That's, uh, that's beyond Fox. So the, the number after Fox is 10. Obviously, you won't work through this course as quickly as you could simply listen to it. There will be programs to load. You'll have to load Atmel Studio. And with each module, I'll give you the source code so you can download that and step through it. But of course, this is all going to take a little longer than, than simply listening to it. But you will learn the chip and you will learn assembler. Incidentally, Atmel Studio 7 is a terrific piece of work. It's an IDE. It's got an editor for writing programs. It's got a compiler for turning them into something the chip understands. But much more than that, it's got a simulator, which uh, simulates the chip so fully that you can write all the programs you need, really, before you buy your first chip. I recommend Studio. You'll download that and you'll step through the examples with it. Nothing in this course will cost you any money. All the programs that I've downloaded, everything that I recommend, it's all they're all free downloads. I won't be stepping you through installation of programs. I presume that you know how to do that. But there's nothing complicated about them. It's just a case of following the instructions and installation runs according to a, 
a set format in any case and they're all just like any other program to install well it's a new day and there's new light and I've turned my computer away from the window a bit so that my glasses aren't reflecting it quite so much um, I did try to do that last night actually but there wasn't enough light to illuminate me so uh, I couldn't really do it the course it's made of several modules and as I speak I haven't actually finished them all as I'm finishing modules I'm sending them up to YouTube and I'm collecting them all into a, into a, a YouTube collection so I will publish that when the course is finished if you want to see how many modules there are then I suggest just have a look in the collection and, and see what's there some of the modules are up to about 40 minutes in length but finally you know that's that's only the length of a single class in a technical college so I hope you'll be able to bear with it and and uh, and work through it and I hope that it's of some real benefit to you with each module look in the description text below because I've put links in there to example programs which I will put on github so you'll be able to download the examples and work through them with the software that you have also downloaded now I'd like to mention a couple of projects that I've made using the AT Tiny 85 the first one was a table saw uh, well I didn't actually make it <laughs> I didn't make a table saw using an AT Tiny 85 but I bought a table saw that had a kind of motor in it that they call a universal motor which starts up so fast that it accelerates the saw blade so quickly that it wrecked the components inside the saw as you see the motor has a gear wheel ground into the end of its shaft and that meshes with another gear wheel on the saw blade arbor that's the, the shaft that the saw blade is on and just with the force of accelerating the saw blade over a course of about a year of hobbyist usage it had stripped all of the teeth off the gear wheel so clearly this saw blade was accelerating far too quickly and something needed to be done well I couldn't actually get spares for it so I bought another saw table but they're cheap tables they're less than a hundred dollars so I decided that I wanted this one to last longer and I designed a soft start mechanism all based around an AT Tiny 85 driving a triac to control the 50 Hertz 240 volt mains and using that the saw blade now starts up much more gently over about a two second period if there is any interest in the soft start mechanism I'll do a short presentation on it and I'll share the schematic and the program source material now let me show you the other project that I made this is my mains timer it can be completely controlled through a single button so when you press the button it comes on it's currently set for a time of 10 seconds so it comes on switches on a light and in 10 seconds it'll it'll time out and this little green LED down there will also go out there we are uh, it can be completely controlled it can be programmed and everything through the single button and it just has a little beeper on it for feedback so if I want to program it I press it to switch it on press it in again and it goes to programming mode indicated by the yellow LED so if we program it for 340 seconds you press it three times for the three four times for the four and for a zero you can't press it no times uh, you've, you've got to do something with the button obviously so I make it a long press and it beeps twice during the long press to indicate that it has uh, accepted a zero then when it's completely programmed it replays it so you you'll hear it go beep 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 for the three beep 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 for the four and a long beep for the zero right so one two three one two three four and a long one for the zero one two three two three four 
and a long one for the zero. And there it goes into its timing cycle. While it's in the timing cycle, you can press this and wait for a beep, release it, and that cancels the timing session so that if, if you, uh, well, if you want to cancel the timer, that's how you do it.